with uh, the bearings. And this one actually had no bearings on the output shaft or the input shaft. It was riding right on the cast iron. So I'll try to get in here. Right now what I'm doing is I'm welding it up. I'm using 43, 4430 Royal. I'm gonna try to weld everything up and line bore it. Um, if you look down here, you can see the extensive damage that hole is actually supposed to be round. Um, some places a quarter inch of damage. You can see the out of roundness. I'm gonna weld that all up and I'm going to bore it with this lovely Rube, Bolger, Rube Goldberg line bore setup and hopefully put bushings in it. We'll have to bore out the bowl gear housing. Um, that one was untouched, but I couldn't find factory factory bearings. And then also the tail shaft here uh, was riding iron to iron. I'm going to go ahead and put some bushings in. I'm going to go ahead and continue welding. When I get to the boring stage, I'm going to hope to mount this and get a pretty good view of this. I'm going to try to bore it and then close it up and fine bore it. So, let's see what happens. Okay. So, just kind of wanted to show everybody before I start grinding and doing it. it if you look down in here, I built this up with the uh, Royale 3340 rod, whatever it is. Um, that's a MIG rod. I'm going to go ahead and grind it so that you can see a little bit here. My boring bar is actually tapping the rod or tapping the weld. So we're going to grind that till it just fits and then we're going to do some light cuts and I'm going to try to video I'm going to try to video the the boring procedure. Bore this rough and then weld that everything if everything looks good, we will weld the uh housing back together and finish the bore. Okay, so here it is in all of its glory. <clears throat> kind of doing some rough cuts. See the... Kind of hard to see the movement. Come over here. And put a rheostat on that armature. Try to slow it down a little bit when I do my fine cuts. Right now I'm just roughing it out and then I'm going to weld that cover back on. It's kind of an involved process. If you get out here, you look at uh, very, very a lot of work to do a little bit.
So just trying to get a view before I button it up. Um, got a little, you know, a couple little pits in there, but I've still got about <clears throat> 60 thousandths to machine out after I weld the top back on. Of course, we get up here where we can maybe see the front there, and we're still, still doing it. So, so far, the air compressor came on. Okay. So that's the finished bore. Now what I did, I can't afford to, you can't ream these bushings. And so I was better off a hair too loose because I can't, I get one chance at this. So they're kind of a push fit. Back up here. So I'm able to start them by hand and they squeeze that perfectly closed. I'll probably put a little red Loctite on there just to kind of hold them in place, but that way I won't be so tight I can't get my shaft in there. So that's the back bore. That one, uh, the issue with this whole thing was the larger, the larger um, windmill used the actual cast as bearings, so it ate the cast. So I'm replacing those bearings with uh, bronze back uh, Teflon internal coated bearings. They're actually made to run without oil, so hopefully they'll, they'll last. It was the thinnest walled ones I could find. I feel pretty good about this one. Not 100% sure about the front. I'm gonna go kinda <clears throat> see if I feel good about that fit. So that's the next thing. Okay, so now we're doing the, oh, be the bull gears. Now this one wasn't too tore up, as with the other back one. They were all kind of wallowed out. This one I just need to go 30 thousandths over and get my new Teflon, steel back Teflon bearings in there. So what we're doing right now is just moving this bit about a thousandths at a time and then we'll walk it up.